and welcome to another video of the Spiderweb Training Method. My name is Adrian from SpiderWebTraining.com and today we're going to talk about a really nice topic, Function Training. So here's the intro. Today for the first time we're going to watch an interview from Adam aka the Bioneer. If you don't know who Adam is and if you're not following him, He's a really, really good content creator from the UK. I love his content, I love his approach, and basically he does it all. But as I also always say, we are both eternal students. So I'm gonna leave his link down in the description below. Adam did an interview with JC Santana. JC Santana is one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic, within the functional training industry and one that I'm actually certified by. So they discuss about what truly is functional training, so we're gonna, in a certain way, react to that interview, and I'm gonna leave JC's channel also down in the description box below. Let's see what we can get from this. When I pull back out of the specificity principle, I leave more energy and I leave more time for the proper practice to happen. Exactly. The specificity training is one of the most important things within the functional training, say, aspect, concept. That is what it actually is. Functional training is a concept about why am I doing what I am doing. So the specificity, let's say, idea, is to actually train into something that's that has direct implication in the field, in the court, in the whatever it is that you're playing, whether it's if you're jumping, throwing, or running. Yeah, because the practice is where the sportsman gets better. Here is where the athlete gets better. So this is a really important point, because a lot of times when we discuss functional training, there's like this big confusion about what it is. And the thing is, is that as JC is saying, that in the gym with the functional training concept, the athlete gets better. So that means that there, his, his or her joints get more ready, his or her body gets stronger, gets, let's say, more specifically prepared to then go to the field, to the court, to whatever it is that that person is playing and perform better. So this is something really, really important. but which is infamously nebulous and hard to define. This partly explains the varied responses that we see to the term, with some seeing it as the future of fitness, and others seeing it as a bunch of fools on wobble boards. This is also like really, really typical, that when we want to see different definitions about functional training, there's like a lot of different things. So which one actually is it? As Adam says here, it's like, there's a really confusing term. Spoiler, I fall firmly in the former camp. So, what is functional training? And how do you employ the strategies in your workouts? Functional training has no single definition. Generally, though, it is agreed that functional training means training for function. You are trying to improve functional capacity by ensuring you can do the things you want to do better, or alternatively, gaining the ability to do more things. Training for function. And this is one of the most, let's say, important training for a function, for a specific thing, to develop a specific thing, to develop your hip extension, to develop your power, to develop your stability. Functional training gives you the tools for you to actually get there. We develop athleticism and gas. That's our job. Yeah. Okay. Once that happens, the sports... Uh, coach is in charge of the player. You go, all right, they locomote a lot. Yeah. I have to stabilize that single leg plant and the seven frame, huge. The seven frame, what JC is telling, is that one-legged position. When you're only with one leg on the ground, then between your hips and the leg that is planted on the ground, you get like a C shape, like a seven shape. So that seven frame is that what he's actually saying. But look at that, what he also said is that the idea is that in the gym, 
they get more resilient. They get all the qualities that they need to then go to, this, to their specific discipline and to apply all that, to be able to, let's say, run faster because they have develop a let's say stronger and better understanding about how their bodies work okay they cut a lot so i gotta apply terminal extension terminal triple extension not in the middle terminal with an inverted and everted ankle well so this is a bit technical so Triple extension, it's extension of the hips, of the knees and of the ankles. When the ankle is inverter and everter. So again, it's preparing the body and preparing the joints to function at its best capabilities. So that is fairly specific to the athlete. It gets pretty specific, but I think... Specific. It gets pretty specific. Now, for example, what you're seeing here is an MMA fighter practicing what is called the ground and pound. So those green bands, which I have pair, are a killer. So you have, let's say, an opposite resistance for that fighter to actually work really hard on each and every one of those punches. He's in a semi-specific position. He could be knee uh, as well, but standing also it's really specific. So he trains like this. So when he goes to the fight and does exactly the same thing, but without those bands, whew, I feel sorry for the guy that it's on the on the on the bottom. Once you get it, you go, oh shit! Of course it is, and that's the end point. That's it. A function functional training is is the the amount of training that can be applied to a specific activity. Functional training is the amount of training that could be applied to a specific activity. And in here, we're looking for, again, the principle of specificity, but also, in my opinion, the principle of quantity. So how much do you actually need to get better in the field? how much training is actually beneficial and how much of it is actually overloading without no specific, let's say, uh, benefit in the field. So here we're talking about volume. How much volume is it truly ideal? The amount of training that's outside of that realm can be general. That's your bodybuilding strength training. Yeah. All right, and your sport specific, which is basically the, the swinging or something, maybe with a heavier bat or something like that. All good stuff. The functional training is in the middle. Why? Because it allows you to apply more strength to that batting, to the running, to the whatever it is that you're doing. And it's usually sandwiched between general strength and sport specific strength. So here it is. This is the best explanation. So again, when we talk about functional training, we're talking about a concept. We're not talking about simply exercises. In my opinion, there are no functional exercises because what could be functional for someone could not be functional for another person. For example, jumping. Is jumping a functional exercise? Well, it depends who's jumping. If an athlete like a 25 year old athlete is jumping yeah maybe that jump for him or her it's functional but how about my grandma so the functionality of an exercise depends on the person that is actually doing it and here jc explains extremely well where does functional training sit so you need to have let's say a strength base and that strength base, you can do it with your bench presses and your squats and your deadlifts and whatever type of, let's say, isolated or bodybuilding kind of exercise you want. But then, believing that only because you are a good bench presser, you're going to hit a baseball or you're going to run faster or you're going to be stronger while grappling, that's a misconception. Yeah, you need to be strong, maximally or sub-maximally strong, but then you need something that gives your brain the ability to put all that general strength 
into the, specif the specificity, into the specific thing that you want to do. So functional training is what gives you that. Simple. So it's like the, it's like the link between... It's the bridge. Yes. Awesome. And, and that, so yeah, literally transferring the strength to the movement. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. What way do I do? That's brilliant. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed that video. That was my first, let's say, reaction. Again, Adam from the Bioneer. I'm leaving his channel down in the description box below. And obviously, JC Santana and his Institute of Human Performance. I'm also going to leave his link uh, on the description box below. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know if you have any more doubts about what functional training is. Leave it on the comments. And let me know also if you want me to do this type of videos because these are uh, like you doing these videos. They are fun, they are nice. So let me know and maybe we can include them in the spinal training method. I hope you enjoyed it. Now stay in the channel. I'm gonna leave you this video up here and also be sure to check that one over there because I think this one, this one is right for you. See you next time.